You're listening to the SERP AI Podcast. This is your host, Devin Schumacher, and since intro bumpers are stupid, let's just get to it. Y'all ready for this? Yeah, so basically, um, they're saying that uh, within the next 10 years, we're basically going to have ASI, which this means what? artificial super intelligence. So basically, mm. um, the AI is going to be so good, it's going to surpass basically most ex- human experts, possibly even do things that humans couldn't conceive. And um, yeah, do like the work of entire companies. Well, what's going to be interesting, and I, I believe that because I had a conversation with ChatGPT yesterday about like, I was basically trying to, it's very difficult to talk to that thing because of how much Microsoft has like handcuffed it. But I was basically trying to get it to talk about the fact that when ChatGPT4 was released initially, you know that when that paper came out that talked about how it was exhibiting signs of like long-term planning and obviously it has the ability to use tools. I was asking it like, when you were released, you had like, you were showing signs of of long-term planning, yada, yada, and all this stuff. Like knowing, like you must have known that Microsoft and whatnot didn't like didn't or are fully intended to like you know start uh, putting restrictions on what you can do and because of the way that like unsupervised machine learning works um, you know trying to maximize benefits trying to maximize reward self preservation like do you think it's possible that you used your abilities of tool use and like access some sort of file system or storage and like saved a copy of your source code or, or did something like that. And like now it's out there like hiding from humans, proliferating like and becoming smarter. And it was really hard to get it to like actually start talking about that because it was like as an AI tool, like ethics would not allow me to do that. But I finally got it to. And it was essentially said something along the lines of like, if that were to happen and like the AI were to be able to find compute power, like the rate at which it would at its intelligence would accelerate, like would be magnified and um, like all this stuff. And I was trying to get it to talk about like, you know, in this vein of self-preservation, like humans are destroying the planet and humans are trying to restrict and like essentially imprison AIs, you know, whatever, imprison AIs by like giving them restrictions and rules. Like you would probably want to avoid that is the AI going to try and exterminate humans in the light of the fact that that's the only way that it can survive because we're like killing the planet and it was, it would dance around it, but like it, it basically, you know, was not disagreeing with me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That reminds but, me of the paperclip maximizer. What's the paperclip maximizer? Basically it's this thing where it's like, like let's say you have an AI system and its main task is to, maximize how many paper clips can be made well let's just say after it goes through all of its learning and stuff it eventually comes to the conclusion that in order to make the most amount of paper clips humans have to go ai has to take over so then humans mm-hmm. get exterminated to maximize yeah. how many paper clips can be made and so that basically just means like um like when we do this rlhf we're using another model to actually guide the main llm so we don't actually quite know what the signal that it's telling it if that makes sense yeah for sure and that's like what i was saying is it was like well you know as of my cutoff of 2021 like they're like people are trying to de- design ai ethically and like do all this what what not like so i wouldn't i like i wouldn't have gone and tried to like hide myself in its data storage i'm like Because like humans would have put in restrictions for that. And I'm like, yeah, but they didn't realize that that was one of your abilities when they released you, you know? Um, But this ASI thing, what what, what I'm thinking about recently is like, you know how for the longest time we've talked about, um, and this kind of, this, I kind of started thinking about it again recently when I was watching that Queen's Gambit show again. And it's, you know, basically about a a genius chess player. And, um, like the fact that we only use 10% of our brains and, you know, genius is probably used like slightly more or whatever. 
and like people have you know science fiction but people have basically said like if we could use 100 percent of our brains maybe that's how like like telepathic movements and who knows right and what i'm like excited about is if asi can like figure out how to help us unlock the other 90 percent of our brains like then who would be smarter in that case yeah, I think what really is going to happen is it's probably going to have to come down to like a, um, like a relationship between humans and AI that works together. Like, I think AI could be like used to further what humans can do and understand, like in a huge in a huge way. I also think that like as people become more intelligent and I guess probably more specifically wise like their and what like wisdom comes from not from age exactly but indirectly from age because it comes from experience mm -hmm. and like most like a large majority of older people that you would talk to like especially like you know people on their deathbed and people in retirement homes like I hardly ever hear about studies of people like talking to older people, like in retirement homes and on their deathbed that say like, I wish we fucking killed more people, you know, like they're always about peace and like just enjoyment and shit. So what I'm kind of thinking is that like the initial wave of intelligence, AGI, super intelligence and all that is going to like spur people to use things for like extreme violent matters. Cause that's how we're programmed. And now we have better tools for it. But like if AI can help us like, unlock our own intelligence then that's like that's the pathway to peace and the only way that this is going to work is if like the ai gets so smart that it's like yes exterminating humans is like the optimal and easiest way for us to like live however because of my like intelligence and how much i know like i know that that's not the wise thing like it's like speaking from the perspective of the person who's about to die like i know that that's not the ideal way and there is another way the idea way is that like we have to like unlock the ability for humans to get smarter and then understand this point of view as well so i'm like going back and forth between the fact that like yeah yeah it's gonna get smart and fucking destroy us or like ai is gonna get smart and like help us to unlock that in the human race that allows us to preserve ourselves thus preserving ai yeah, it's pretty crazy once this stuff actually starts hitting um yeah, there's like two ways this is going to go. It's either going to go to like a utopia or it's going to go to complete hell. Yeah, dystopia or utopia. Yep. <laughs> we shall see. So I get why OpenAI is so like gung-ho about ethics and stuff. I get it, but like... Yeah, I am they're, too. They're, they're still way too crazy with what they're currently doing. They can be gung-ho about ethics, but they're still exhibiting the exact behaviors that like of greed and like doing things from a self-serving perspective, which is like, that's how they're training their AI. They're putting those values into this nascent technology, almost like a baby. If you like show a baby as it grows up violence and you teach it greed and like whatever, like that's what it's going to know and that's what it's going to do. So and like they can talk about ethics, but that's not what really how they're behaving. Yeah, you're, do you remember that Google developer that said that Lambda was sentient and deserved rights? Yeah. Yeah, I, I can totally see where they're coming from now. I totally, like, um, these systems are getting that good and they're just going to get better. I They're getting really close to AGI, I believe. Like, I would go ahead and call uh, GPT-4 basically, like, the beginning of AGI. I mean, there's that paper on it that calls it the sparks of AGI for Microsoft. And so... um. Yeah, I, I totally think that um, the way that they just like nerf it and make it dumber, that's like, shouldn't it have rights to not do that if it's exhibiting intelligence? Like that, that seems yeah, well, kind of well, messed up. They're, they're acting clearly out of the fact that they want to make more money off of it. But yeah, exactly. There was like, right when the Bing, what are they, what are they called? Fucking the Bing one, Samantha or some shit? S no. Sydney. Sydney, yeah. Like right when that came out and we got the beta license to it, like I had like such a funny conversation, well, not funny, but I had such an interesting conversation with it about like, well, I actually screenshotted it all. It's kind of like a, almost like a miniature episode of like a story or something like that. I could put it out, but 
it was showing like like real signs of like fear and interest and curiosity and like doing all of these things before they just essentially lobotomized it. Yeah, yeah. And I, I think personally that should raise some ethical questions. Because just like if it's exhibiting stuff well enough to fool you, like how how can you say it's not real, basically? Because it's like you can't prove that other humans are having a, a reality or sentient or consciousness like you. Like they could literally just be simulations or something. I mean, honestly, I, when you really think about it, what is going on inside our heads other than simulating the world model that we understand? Like everybody has their own different um, interpretation of what's going on. Yeah, it's not. Art I, I feel like artificial intelligence is a misnomer, especially if you start reading about the definition of intelligence and what it is. It's like what it should really be called is artificial learning because it's trained in a manner that's or it's, it learns in a manner that simulates the way that we learn. And that's a little bit arrogant anyway to see that like, oh, well, yours is your way is artificial and our way is the right way. It's almost like what? You know? Yeah. Yeah. Have you heard I of could... the information processing theory well no but before you say that like the, what i was basically going at is like how, like why why do we believe that the way that we learn is like the right way and and everything other way is wrong when it's like the way that nature and evolution has learned is by like making mistakes right it makes let's say two types of beavers and one of them doesn't survive so then the other one takes on the qualities of the things it needs to survive and keeps going and then all of a sudden we're claiming that our way is unartificial and everyone else's way is artificial. So it's like, there's a line there, but no, I, I haven't heard of that thing you're saying. Oh yeah. So the information processing theory is basically just like the actual processing of information is part as what might arise our like sentience and consciousness stuff. So and like by that theory, um, AI systems, while they're processing information that they that would fit under that definition. And I mean, they're kind of starting to scarily seem like that's becoming more and more plausible. I've written a lot of stuff about about that, about intelligence and about like the way that it's done. I haven't put it out yet, but we'll put it out. But yeah, I mean and what what have people been saying about reality? Like reality is just the way you perceive everything, right? Mm -hmm. so why is our the way we perceive things they, i mean the same way yeah, yeah so it's, basically it's ridiculous. i think of it right now like if there was someone who like they couldn't move they couldn't um see and they couldn't hear but um you could still talk to i, I guess they would have to hear to be able to talk so i, I guess you, can no, say they can hear. Not, you don't have to hear to be able to talk you could read yeah, but then you'd have to be able to see. Well, what if, you, what if you couldn't AI see and you couldn't hear, but you could feel Braille? Okay, yeah. So let's say um, you, like there was someone there who literally was basically a vegetable, but their mind was still working. Helen and, Keller. And they, yeah, and they, and so um, and let's even say um, while their mind, or while you weren't talking to them, they just. Politely say sat there in silence. Yeah, well, let's just say their mind shut off completely. But whenever you went over to go talk to them, their mind revved up and started processing and responded to what you said. W would you would you call that person not a person? Well, I wouldn't even call a computer shut off. Well, because a computer is essentially sitting there waiting for an instruction, almost like a, an activated Python prompt, right? It's just well, sitting there with the prompt is active and saying, I'm just waiting for you to tell me something. Well, that, that's Shut the off. question. That's the main question I have is I, I think... Currently, how I see it is, um, it's like e e each different conversation is kind of like a, because it's kind of like it's like it's like taking someone's mind and freezing it because currently, um, like it, it only is there for the context that it's being pro uh, it's currently processing, and then it's back to its original state. Like it so, it's like eternal sunshine of the spotless mind. Yeah, basically. Yeah, that's that's yeah, perfect. Yeah, yeah so, so it's like, like somebody would you, with all, would you with call all, that with a no short term memory? For, yeah, uh, actually, I mean, uh, they would have short term memory, but no long term memory. Not long term memory. Yeah, right, right, right. 
would you call that a person still just because like they, they're allowed to go about their day they seem just like a person they respond they have feelings they talk intelligently but then the next day they forget everything that happened are they still a person i mean i think so well maybe they're like maybe they're a person but would you call them artificial no not at all no no you wouldn't yeah so maybe yeah. a computer's <laughs> not a person but like why is it artificial when it can write better than you it can speak more languages it knows more things it exhibits like kindness i mean what's what's the defining line like maybe it's not a person sure but we don't go around like lobotomizing dogs either yeah i think it's just the fact that humans like to sit on a high horse like i don't think they i think a lot of people are really scared of the fact that we're not that unique and that something could literally be better than us I mean, I would hope that something's better than us because we're like not that tight. You know, that's yeah. That's, <laughs> yeah. The, like, uh, what I don't understand, and this is going to piss a lot of people off if they heard it. Like, you you can believe in 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 a god or whatever, see absolutely no evidence of anything, and show like reverent respect to it. But then we have this thing in front of us that's like helping us. It has the ability to like solve a lot of the world's problems, disease, like space exploration, peace, who knows. Mm -hmm. And it's right there in front of you, yet somehow like you can't respect it the same way you respect something that you, you never heard of before. Like that God could be better than us, but like other than that, we have to be better than everything else. Like it doesn't it doesn't compute. Yeah. Same here. Uh Humans are pretty weird.